Hey everybody, it's me Nemaisa and I am back with another Halloween video. And this time it's actually inspired by a praying mantis or several praying mantises. Sai? Anyway, the paint is inspired by praying mantis and, you know, some sci-fi movies, you get the idea. So this time I'm going to apply RBFX prosthetics created, so sculpted, by Wayne Anderson and Wen Zeng. So the face was sculpted by Wayne Anderson and the cowl was sculpted by Wen Zeng. Now, since this is foam latex, I'm going to seal it first and I'm going to use Mel Products Pax Paint, kind of in a, you know, light mossy green. And I'm diluting it a little bit with just a little bit of water and I'm going to coat the entire prosthetic. I also applied like dry brushed a little bit of white Pax Paint on top to make that green just more diluted than you see here or like less bright green, if you will. So I want to seal this prosthetic so I can go over it with um, alcohol paints. Because foam latex is porous, you have to seal it with something like grease paints or Pax paints. Otherwise, it just pretty much dr like seeps or the color seeps through. How can I explain it? Like it drinks it up, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I'm sealing it first and I'm just using, you know, a wet sponge and dabbing that all over the prosthetic, as you can see right here. It doesn't have to be opaque in all the spots, just opaque enough that um, pretty much everything that I'm going to paint is sealed. As you can see, I'm leaving those eye pieces open. That's not where I see through, obviously. I see through those tiny, tiny holes over there, but that's where uh, the eye shells are going to be put in. I also painted the eye shells, but I did that off of camera. Um, but the eye shells that you get with this face prosthetic are clear. So either you tint them or you paint them yourself, you get the idea. Now that the prosthetic is pretty much coated, you'll see that in a second, I'm going to use a couple of brown shades of Skin Illustrator Alcohol Activated Makeup Palettes. These need to be activated with either 99% isopropanol alcohol, do not use any less percentage, it has to be 99% or uh, I believe the Skin Illustrator Activator. I do not own that, so I have no idea how that works, but I'm using isopropanol alcohol. I'm using a couple of shades of their, um, let me think, V's Pirate Palette number three, Guardians Palette, uh, Necromania, pretty much, you know, like dark, earthy uh, colors, like dark brown, earthy colors. And I'm pretty much just dabbing that over certain areas in the prosthetic. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I have a reference photo of a couple of praying mantis um, bugs <laughs> or insects. And I'm just using that as reference. And I'm just going along with the flow, like letting the prosthetic tell me where um, I should put these colors, basically. Here you can see one of these palettes. Again, it's like a, a like dark brown. And now I'm using a spatter brush or speckling brush. And I'm just speckling that over certain areas of the prosthetic as well to give it more texture. Again, no rhyme or reason. I'm just going with the flow. I'm adjusting it as I go along. <laughs> it's really difficult to explain. I went in with, you know, light washes of dark blue, um, some pink tones all over the prosthetic and just trying to blend that in. I also used a little bit of airbrushing to uh, create some more shadows in the pieces. So I used uh, EBA Performance Makeup Endura alcohol-based makeup in the shades Aged Tattoo and seed Seaweed Green. My goodness. Um, so yeah, I mean, I went over the prosthetics several times. This took me a couple of hours actually to get it to a point where I was happy with it. Um, just a lot of light washes, a lot of dry brushing of uh, those pack paint, uh, packs paints on top of it. It was a lot <laughs> and I couldn't film everything, but uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like after I was pretty much done with the pre-paint. Here it is. I was really happy with how it looked. Again, several layers of alcohol paints and Pax paints, and this is what I got. <laughs> a 
lots and lots of hours were put into this. I think in total, it took me about 10 hours, like from pre-painting, applying the whole thing. So yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna go over the cowl. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, again, sealing the cowl with Pax paints. So that same green and on top of that, a little bit of white. Uh, I shaded the areas with that same Endura mixture. So uh, that aged tattoo and that seaweed green. Obviously, because I wanted it to match to the face. So I'm taking my time, sponging this on, you know, brushing in the details. By the way, a lot of the brushes that I did use are by Delium Tools. Um, that area you see right there, like that is still very much bright green. I left that open because I'm filling that in with the white Pax paint. And then on top of that, I'm using a kind of burgundy red alcohol paint to airbrush in some veins because that looks cool. Kind of looks like it's, you know, like it's brains <laughs> coming out of the skin. I just, I pretty much went ham with the prosthetic. Um, here it's still very patchy simply because, you know, it's a base. And then on top to diffuse it a little bit, I'm speckling a lot of um, white, like bone white tones, some dark brown again. Again, all airbrush, uh, not airbrush, alcohol paints. <laughs> so it's a lot of layers on top of layers on top of layers until I was satisfied with um, the overall look and until it matched the face, basically. So now we're getting to the point that I'm going to airbrush in some uh, shadow, just like with the face prosthetic. It's again that mixture of aged tattoo and seaweed green. And I'm just going over certain areas of the prosthetic. I wanted it really dramatic uh, simply because I felt the face didn't have any really harsh uh, shadows and I felt like adding that to the cowl. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just felt like it. So I'm going to start filling in that really bright green area. There you go. With that white Pax paint. It's gonna give me a nice white base to work on. That's really what I wanted, like to have those uh, veins really pop out to kind of have them look like brains protruding from the head. I don't know. I just thought it looked really cool. And I just always like adding veins at, at somewhere in an FX makeup look. I also asked my husband to add a couple of veins in there simply because I wanted to share this process with him. Um, <laughs> last year, it was his turn to you know, have a cowl on his head and have that experience. And this year it's my turn again, <laughs> but I still wanted to have him be part of this uh, little process. Now, I probably should have given this disclaimer at the very beginning of the video, but hey, it is what it is. I do not recommend you do this uh, as a self application. If you are just starting out with FX makeup, it was really rough. I could barely see anything. I legit um, closed my eyes to paint or to apply and paint at some point. I cried, I cussed. Um, so yeah, again, a, d a little disclaimer. If you're doing this, please apply it on somebody else. It will, <laughs> it will save you uh, a lot of headaches in the end <laughs> and uh, a lot of frustration. So we're nearing the end of the pre-painting of the cowl and I'm saying pre-painting, but actually it's just the, f the finished paint. Like there was nothing else that um, I wanted to add basically to the rest of the prosthetic while I was applying. And uh, I'm gonna show you, you know, the, f the final result in a moment. But um, yeah, this is like the application day was two days later and I already applied my bald cap. By the way, the bald cap did not need to be applied super neat and blended in simply because uh, it was going to be covered by prosthetics and paint. Now, the reason why I'm wearing a bald cap is because the cowl is actually too small for my head. I have a big head <laughs> and I was so excited picking out these prosthetics that I completely forgot to check if this would fit my face. And it like it felt 
Like the prosthetic itself, the cowl was perfect and, you know, nothing to add except for the fact that it didn't fit me. So to bridge that gap between my ear and the rest of my face, I decided to put a bald cap on top of my ears, so over it, and blend it into my skin. And it worked out perfectly. In the end result, you don't see any of that, so I'm happy with those results. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gluing down the prosthetic with some Prosade adhesive, so underneath the prosthetic, and then because it's foam latex, on top of the edges, it's porous, it seeps right through onto the skin. So um, yeah, I had no issues with that. I started crying. <laughs> I tell you, I started crying with this process. I was so happy during this part. I was focused and nervous, but I was happy. Uh, my husband helped me out a little bit in the back of my head because I couldn't see that. So uh, the back of my head, like my neck, was a collaboration <laughs> between my husband and I. Um, here I'm setting, by the way, here I'm setting the, the edges with some translucent powder, like to lock in the edges and not, you know, get stuck to the edges with my fingers while applying the face. Um, but yeah, here's my husband helping me out. I was fine up until this point and then the application of the face. It took way, way longer than it really needed to be. Usually I would, you know, be able to do that just fine. Also, by the way, <laughs> blocking, uh, or blocking, covering my eyes with some dark um, grease paint and eyeshadow so that you don't see my eyes through uh, the little holes in the prosthetic that I look through. Just so you know. <laughs> I was very happy to not have to focus on my eyes. But yeah, here I'm again applying uh, some Prosade to the center of my face because that's the easiest way to align a prosthetic perfectly. This still was fine, and then I had to glue down the edges around my face, and it was torture. <laughs> it was torture. I couldn't see anything. Again, I closed my eyes, and I prayed that everything worked out fine. I was constantly asking my husband, like, does this look okay? Is it blended in? At some point, I tried working with two or three mirrors just to see if everything was blended in. I took so long to blend in these edges. Like too long but um in the end like again for the edges i did the same process as with the face and the cowl um, so i didn't film that part because it's again the same thing but my goodness whoo this this was a lot this was an extreme project i'm very happy with the end result um i think i would do it again if i had to start all over <laughs> because I'm really proud but um, yeah <laughs> this is insane anyway thank you so so much for watching I hope I could help you out a little bit or I hope you just enjoyed watching the process um, happy Halloween I hope I get to squeeze out another look and until the next video bye bye oh and all products are listed below in the information box <laughs>